fucking franchises here, bud. Okay, hey. It's good to see you there. Another episode of the franchise coming your way. Um, and this is one we're talking about. It never even had a sequel that came out in theaters. We're breaking the concept of the show. But we've done it before. No big deal. Uh, it's the start of a new year. We thought we'd start with an exciting new franchise. I mean, it's not new. It's like 25 years old. But we thought it'd be fun to talk about The Great American Psycho by Mary Heron with Christian Bale, of course. And it's weird sequel, which I'd never seen before last night and will watch roughly 100 more times in my life. Um, this is American Psycho 2 colon all American girl. And you could tell it's it's called that because she wears a T-shirt with that on it for like roughly 40 minutes of the movie. OK, um, let me bring in my co-host to discuss these great masterpieces with me. Um, my good friend. Logan be a dare. What's up, buddy? I have to say I didn't notice the shirt she was wearing, but I kind of thought they didn't know the title because it opens where we get a title card. It just says American Psycho 2. Yeah, so I, I know. It's kind of like a later thing that they added on. Yeah, I think they got it from the T-shirt. Yeah, it does seem. I think you're exactly right. Because here's how it. here's how it went with that movie. The original it wasn't. <sighs> I don't want to get into it right now. I don't. There's so All much right. to talk about with like the behind the scenes of these movies. But um, anyway, that one, the All American Girl is not in the official title, but she wears a T-shirt with the American flag on it that says that. Okay, and I think I think they just ripped it right off of that. Yeah. Someone was watching the movie in marketing. They like couldn't stop looking at Mila Kunis's boobs, and he was like, "I think I got a title." Yep, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, how old is Mila Kunis in this movie? I read that she's she did nineteen it. when it comes out. I think she's less than eighteen when she makes it. To be honest, I I read that she filmed it between hiatus of season after season three of that '70s show, and she was mm -hmm. famously only like fourteen, 14. <laughs> yeah. when they cast her. Right? It, so right. she was probably seventeen filming this movie, which explains why it's like a completely sexless movie compared to. American Psycho. She offers a blowjob at one point. I think that's the furthest that's, that it gets. <laughs> she does. She even gets on her knees. That's why we have Lindy Booth, though. She's the sex in the movie. Is that what you mean? My girlfriend's obsessed with Lindy Booth. Anytime she shows up in a movie, she points her out, and I still can't like notice her on sight. Oh, come on. She's Cry Wolf Girl to me. I was even like, when she showed up in the movie, it was a shot of two girls, and I was proud of myself. I said to Dallas, like, is that Lindy Booth? And she said, yeah, but I was looking at the other girl. What? How'd you do yeah, that? I don't know. I'm a moron. That's freaking crazy. By the way, she's, <laughs> I can, we'll get into it. I have a, I have, I'm so excited to talk about the second one. I agree. A great time. Okay, but let's start talking about the first one. And the first one has one of the most amazing behind the scenes stories of any movie ever and it is truly the story of how filmmakers great filmmakers are just much much smarter than large studios that's okay. that's the moral of the story okay let's get into it american psycho so this book comes out 1991 it's by brett easton ellis you familiar with him yep i've heard of him Probably you never read book. anything by him? No. I feel like even... I feel like even dumb people... Not, you're not dumb, Logan. This isn't meant to <laughs> reflect you. I feel like even dumb people who like go their lives without ever reading... As, again, I'm still not talking about you. Mm, seems um, like it a little bit. I really am not. I mean, but like, like... There are dudes I knew in high school, okay? Who would like... They, own, they never read but they read like two novels, okay? And it was always like one Brett Easton Ellis novel and one Chuck Palahniuk novel. <laughs> They'd okay. read like Fight Club and American Psycho and that's it, okay? And and you just knew they were going to be some toxic douchebag. Okay, or Michael I mean, lots Crichton. Of dudes like People that. like Michael Crichton, right? Yeah, but that's like mainstream. Like, yeah, I could see you pick that up when you're a kid. Like, or oh, King. I saw Everybody Jurassic King. Park. But I, I read feel like people... You did? Yeah, I read Pet Cemetery. I read some of The Shining. I read Cujo. All right, I'm just talking about like seventeen year old edge lords. Yeah. 
All right. They all had a copy of, of those books in their collection, uh, as did I. Although I never read American Psycho for some reason. I think I liked the movie too much, and I thought it was weird that, like, the book was written by Brett Easton Ellis, where the movie was made by, like, talented female filmmakers. I don't know. I, I never bothered to read the book. But it came out in 1991. It was a huge hit. And uh, people wanted to make it into a movie, which surprised Brett Easton Ellis because only one of his books had been made into a movie before. That was less than zero. And that kind of tanked. And he didn't like it. So he had kind of decided he was out of the movie business until this uh, producer, Edward R. Pressman, came a calling. Okay. This guy apparently loved the book. And, uh, and he was a significant producer. He worked with um, Terrence Malick in the 70s. I think he was the executive producer on Badlands. He had produced a lot of uh, David Mamet's early stuff, like talk radio and. Homicide, I think. He'd done Wall Street, which probably had something to do with his interest in this. Um, anyway, that's Pressman. So Pressman, he's interested, and somebody else really liked the book, too, and his name is Jonathan Depp. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jonathan Depp loving it, predictably. I mean, you gotta figure Jonathan Depp was like one of those 17-year-old edgelords when he was 17. Think about his interest in books. He loves Brett Easton Ellis and Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> he never aged beyond 20. Mm -hmm. um, Can we not call so, him Jonathan ever again? I really didn't Jonathan, like that. Jonathan Depp. I hate that so much. I think I have my ranking of him on Letterboxd saved as that. Oh my god. I think it's funny for some reason. I just think dudes, adult men calling themselves Johnny or lame. <laughs> Johnny, Jonathan Bananas. <laughs> yeah, he should. He should be Jonathan Bananas by now. <laughs> <laughs> or at least John Bananas. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so he's looking at Depp, and here's who he likes to direct it. Stuart Gordon, the guy who made Reanimator. <laughs> which All right, that's been cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but that falls through. And then the next crew he's got going is David Cronenberg attaches himself to it. And he wants Brad Pitt and Brad Pitt's into it. They're going to make it together. He would have been good. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, like, all of these sound interesting to me. Yeah. Um, so that falls apart. OK. Then Edward Pressman goes to another guy who's interested in it. This guy, Rob Weiss. OK. Now, Rob Weiss. He was this like complete fucking moron who was making independent films at the time. And he is exactly the type of guy who read two books at 17 and then never again. OK, mm -hmm. his first independent film was called Amongst Friends, um, which had a lot of buzz at the time for being Scorsese-esque. And if you go back and watch it now, Logan, you'll be wondering what the fuck was Hollywood thinking at all in the 90s? Yeah. It is, I mean, it's like Scorsese in that it's like a street movie that uses songs, but like it's also horrible, like absolutely terrible. Um, so Rob Weiss, thankfully that doesn't come to be, okay? But they keep looking. They still want to make this movie. So Ed Pressman, he hires a new actor by the name of Billy Crudup. To wow. play Patrick Bateman, okay? And that's when he hires Mary Heron to direct. Now, Mary Heron had gotten her start as a documentarian uh, working for the BBC. She actually had a really crazy life. Like, she grew up, her family was, like, all involved in, like, the entertainment world. And she, like, grew up part of her life in England where she dated Tony Blair, who eventually became the prime minister of England. <laughs> and, uh, and then after that, moved to America, where she became heavily involved in the punk rock scene in the late 70s and like hung out with Andy Warhol and shit. Or not Andy Warhol, but John Cale, who ended up uh, doing the music for her films. He was also in the Velvet Underground. Um, anyway, she becomes a documentary filmmaker working for the BBC. Uh, she pitches I Shot Andy Warhol for them as a documentary. They say make it as a movie. That starts her life in film. Okay, and that's her first film. 
So she's only made one move at this point. And Pressman hires her to direct Billy Crudup in American Psycho. Okay. Um, but then Logan, there's so much to are you following all this? Yeah, I'm following. Pressman there's any a, relation to David S. Pressman? Who's that? Was, oh man. The, the, the not are you rounded. thinking of David S. Pumpkins? No, isn't that a one of the writers on Buffy Pressman? David S. Pressman. Is that wrong? I think he might have directed. Pressman. I think Pressman. there might have been a Pressman directing on Buffy in the early days. Ugh. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, but okay. So Billy Crudup, he's attached to the movie. He decides he doesn't understand the character. He just doesn't get it. He doesn't think he can play it. So he's honest about it to the studio, and he drops out. Okay. Now, Lionsgate has decided they feel great about this because they have found the perfect Patrick Bateman. Okay? Mm -hmm. Who is it? Leonardo DiCaprio. Holy shit, that's terrible. Yeah. So, Mary Harron has decided now that Crudup is gone that she wants Christian Bale. Okay? She goes to see Christian Bale uh, and she hires him. Okay? And Christian Bale starts like preparing for the role going on a diet and like being weird and methody as he does and um but then even though mary harron told him he had the part um lionsgate the studio goes behind her back with and without telling her announces at the Cannes Film Festival that Leonardo DiCaprio has been hired as the wow. star of American Psycho, okay? Mary Aaron immediately goes to the press and says, uh, I'm against this, uh, to which Lionsgate fires her, okay? Wow. Yeah. So they now, they had a script and a director, and they were like ready to make a movie, and now they only have an actor. But it's Leonardo DiCaprio, so it's what they want. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So they they at Leonardo Leo the great Leo, please present us with a list of directors you'd like to work with. Okay. You get to choose the director, sir. You know who would have okay? been good. Tell me, Sam Raimi. No, he wouldn't have. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it would have been too broad. No, he would have been good. All right. Well, DiCaprio, here's his list. He had four names on the list. Here's who I want to work with. Get Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> get Martin Scorsese, oh who I haven't God. worked with yet. Get Danny Boyle, who just made Train Spotting, which I loved. Or get Oliver Stone. Okay. That would have been interesting. So well, that's who they hired. Lionsgate oh, gets okay. Oliver Stone to direct American Psycho. Um, he immediately starts work on the movie, interviewing actors, doing pre-production. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of pre-production, Danny Boyle, another of the directors that Leo wanted to work with, offers him the beach. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and but it didn't start as an offer. Keep in mind that Danny Boyle had already cast Ewan McGregor to star in The Beach, and Leonardo DiCaprio went to Danny Boyle and said, hire me instead. Hmm. So Leo right. wanted off this and onto that? So Leo gets Christian Bale fired from American Psycho, quits on the role before he even starts it, okay? Then gets Ewan McGregor fired from The Beach. <laughs> I mean, this Damn. is a guy who just does not give a fuck about any of his peers. No, he does. He cares about Lily Gladstone. No, he doesn't. His favorite peer. Leonardo DiCaprio, I want to express this here, is not only a disastrously overrated actor, he's also an incredibly shitty person. And I, like, I, I talk about the women stuff all the time, how, of course, he was the um, frontman of a group of friends called the Pussy Posse. But also, he's just horrible to other actors. I'm not going to fight you or anything. Toby Maguire would have been a good Patrick Bateman. What do you think? No, he wouldn't have. My name is Patrick Bateman. 
I believe in a balanced diet and a rigorous exercise yeah. routine. You have to believe that Patrick Bateman <laughs> has a penis. And that's hard to do with Tobey Maguire. Yeah. 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 That's why he's perfect for Spider-Man. Spider-Man doesn't need a penis. He can be flat down there. So what? Leo leaves and they just go there and say, Mary, please come back. You can get no. Christian. No, no, so no. What no. Not, not at all. So Lionsgate, having noticed that Ewan McGregor has been unceremoniously fired from the beach, something he held against Danny Boyle, rightfully so, for many, many years, only reuniting with him for train spotting two years and years later. They never worked That's together cool. again until then. Um uh Lionsgate decides let's hire him to be Patrick Bateman. I hate it. Yeah. So Christian Bale at this point was friends with Ewan McGregor. So he calls up Ewan McGregor after he's heard Ewan got the offer. And says to him, hey, I really want this role. <laughs> and I'd be way better than you. Yeah, and I, I think I'm good for it. And you're not a piece of shit. Would you mind doing me a favor and turning it down? And he does. He does Christian Bale a solid. You know and who else so, would have been good? Who? <laughs> Christian Bale's Reign of Fire co-star, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> he might have been good. I'm with He would have been really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but after Ewan McGregor, they offer the role to Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Ed Norton, and Vince Vaughn, all of whom turn oh, it down. I hate all of them. They, Pat, yeah. they, they really nailed it with Bale. Bale was right. You don't understand. Mer they had the movie. Yeah, Be this Before is all this Leonardo DiCaprio shit, they had Mary Harron. She had written this screenplay with Guinevere Turner. They were ready they had to hired go. Christian Bale. I think they'd already hired Jared Leto and, and maybe Reese Witherspoon, too, like two other actors. And, like, they had this movie. And they just shit canned it for like three years. And we're like, fine, I guess, I guess make your fucking good version of it. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, fine. Imagine a movie uh, with Leo, a, like a, a big scene with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jared Leto. I would have turned the movie off right I in know. that moment. I know. That, but that's, that's one of the best scenes in the movie. <laughs> Only if they both died at the end of that scene <laughs> would this be a watchable movie. Yeah. Um, but like, who right. is you? You're the doorman when Patrick leaves with him I in the I thought about him. You're that guy who just doesn't care about him leaving with a dead at, body. No, but I would have looked up at the blood sp spatter on the floor and been annoyed like i would have had an annoyed look on my face that i had to clean it up <laughs> that would have been a you job not a janitor job absolutely i they was had the a janitor. janitor we didn't yeah but it was like nighttime i'm like and and i had a bucket and a mop that i could use if i needed to like i probably would end up doing that do you have to do any did you have to do anything like when you close like you had to like clean the floors before you leave or anything no no not really i just had to make sure like it didn't look like shit and yeah yeah, yeah, but immediately I was like, oh, that's Daniel. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. I, I did think about him. Anytime mm -hmm. I see a doorman in any movie, I like clock how he works his job and how everybody else treats him. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah. You know what? I, I think Steve Martin isn't nice to his doorman because he's he's never a dick to his doorman and only murders in the building but they never acknowledge <laughs> I don't know they what you're always, talking about they always walk right by the doorman without even acknowledging him and i'm like oh you mean in real life so on the show he did it's not a thought to him i think it translates yeah interesting I, yeah wow look at you <laughs> i think about the psychology like of it i love yeah. it um okay so they finally like christian bale is the only man left in hollywood <laughs> so <laughs> they hire him you know, he, he they only hire him for 50K. That's wow. what he got for making this movie. And, and all that, he got in that shape. He lost all that weight. He, he, meth, he brought fucking the book to set every day. I read that his trailer, like, it was all, like, all the walls were covered in pictures of, like, Donald Trump. Like, people that would have <laughs> inspired um, Patrick Bateman, you know? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah. And he got 50000 for it. You know, it's more money than I'll ever see, but... Yeah, it's pretty good. But for an actor of Bale's I mean, caliber... Th yeah, they they were willing to pay DiCaprio $20 million no, to you're do kidding. this movie. I swear to you. They were going to... Oh. They were... They were going to put $6 million into the movie and $20 million into Leo. That was going to be the budget. Oh, my God. 
That's yeah. terrible. And they yeah. couldn't give up. They couldn't give Bale a million dollars. No, Here's one million thousand. They couldn't even give him one hundred thousand. No, not even. That's. <laughs> Um, why is ba- like Bale was like a he was like a kid actor. He's uh, people know Christian Bale. Yeah, but he's not like um, he's not a known entity at this point. Like he'd acted in. He like, wasn't in Titanic, but people know who he is, right? Not really. Think, I well, mean, then I saw he wasn't he in the Velvet Underground. That was a, that was a movie. What you, the Velvet Gold Mine. Velvet Gold. Velvet Gold. Oh my God, Velvet Gold Mine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but that's like a little Todd Haynes movie. Like he was known in the indie world, and he was known as a child actor for having been in Newsies and uh, Empire, the Empire of the Sun, right? But um, other than that, like I'm looking at his stuff right now, and up to American Psycho, probably his biggest movie of the '90s was Little Women. Oh wow, yeah. Or maybe like doing a voice in Pocahontas, but nobody knew who did the voices in in cartoons back then. They didn't promote that. He wasn't even the main guy. Isn't the main guy Mel Gibson? Yeah, look at this. The same year American Psycho comes out, he's in Shaft, and he played Mm. the villain in that. Yeah. So this is really his star making And look at this. 2001, the year after this, he's in Captain Corelli's Mandolin. He's not even on the poster of that. It's just Nick, Nick Cage and Penelope Cruz. I would say, like, really his breakthrough is The Machinist in 2004, which leads him to Batman Begins. What about Reign of Fire? That's earlier, right? That's a big movie, but kind of failed. Yeah. Wow, so he went... I didn't really know that. Yeah, Bell was sort of just, like, a well-respected weirdo until Batman came out and, like, launched him into the stratosphere. He's one of the best we got, in my opinion. I agree. He is my favorite lisped actor of all time. Emma Stone, we talked about. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. She's it's just usually um, actor speech impediments bother me because it means all of their characters they'll ever play have that speech impediment. Right. And uh, But for some reason, Bale and, and Stone I'm okay with. And he's it, got only, that... it only bothers me a little bit when he plays Batman because it's a little weird that Batman has <laughs> lisped. And he's got that uh, weird little thing beside his eye too. That always kind of bothered me. A little scar? No, the little little uh, like mole type thing. Oh yeah, that's never bothered me. That that oh. that well never bothered me, I guess. But I always I always notice that. Yeah, I guess there are actors with like really defining. F- I mean, De Niro has a mole on his face. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, um, all right. So that's my. My monologue about the history of American Psycho. Isn't it an amazing story? It is, honestly. It's probably one of the better ones that we've ever had on the franchise. I, I think so, too. Yeah. And All right. Leo. Le- freaking Leo. I know. I couldn't believe I got... Like, when I was doing research for this this podcast, I was like, I get to talk about shit about Leonardo DiCaprio on this podcast? This is amazing. Yeah, you know, he's not in a lot of franchises. You don't. Yeah, really never to. did I expect that. <laughs> what is his franchise? Does he have one? Uh, Leo, yeah, the Romeo and Juliet franchise. <laughs> All right, I don't know. I don't think so. He doesn't really do those kinds of movies. Yeah, I can't think of one. He probably this would one. be it. Yeah. Wait, seriously, is he in any? He's in. He one, had, they had to have made one. He's in one scene of the original Poison Ivy. We'll cover him when we do that. He's he's probably not like in a lot of, in the same. Wait, what are we covering next week? Time? Do we know? I'll tell you. Okay, I guess great. we should have talked about it, but I, I do know. It's okay. You can surprise me. Um, all right. Let's. By the way, can I tell you who LNS Pressman was? Yeah. Oh, it was it was LNS. By the way, LNS Pressman. She directed two episodes of Buffy early on. The puppet show. one of show, them the puppet show? I would have gotten that one. I and Inca Mummy one. Girl, two of the worst ever. And then they fired her ass. Yeah. So get out of here, Ellen. You know, and I even like Income Mummy Girl kind of, but it is kind of poorly directed. Remember that scene where like the the bodyguard guy attacks her in the bathroom? Looks yeah. like shit. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. All right. Anyway. Um what are we talking about? American Psycho. So this finally comes out April 14th, 2000. Our director and co-writer is finally, once and for all, Mary Heron, making her second film and maybe her best movie ever. Um, and uh, she, what, what does she end up doing? She follows this up 
With... I saw not much. I don't remember. Yeah, it's kind of it's going a lot of TV this. though. Yes, that's true. She has found a home on TV big time. But she should have um, had a bigger directing film career. I thought. I agree. I like her first three films a lot. Uh, I shot Andy Warhol's very good. Uh, this is very good. And then um, she did one called The Notorious Betty Page with uh, Gretchen Maul. That's a biopic that I think is is nice. And she's made a few movies since then. This one, The Moth Diaries, Charlie Says, which she reunited with Guinevere Turner for. But none of them have really made an imprint. I should maybe watch a couple of them. I don't know. But her best work on TV, people say, is this thing, Alias Grace. I've never watched it, but a lot of people say that's great. I don't know. I don't know any yeah. of that stuff. It was nominated for, like, Emmys and shit that year. Um. Anyway. So, and uh, the writer, her co-writer, is a fella by the name of... Not a fella, what am I talking about? It's a lady. <laughs> it's uh, Guinevere Turner, the great Guinevere Turner. Well, I've been a fan of for years because I, I loved her uh, indie from the 90s called Go Fish. Okay. Okay. So she like made that and um, she starred in it too. It came out like at the same film festival that like Clerks premiered at. And uh, she became close to Kevin Smith and she's a lesbian in real life, Logan. And... Um, Apparently, uh, Kevin Smith, you know, the whole falling in love with a lesbian thing and oh, chasing wow. Amy, a little bit inspired by his relationship with Guinevere Turner. That's cool. It's interesting that she's a lesbian. She knows a lot about uh, men. I think she nails it. I think this, <laughs> I mean, it's one, it's one of the greatest films about toxic masculinity ever made. And it's, it's only female it only it's two women that are the creative team on this yeah, movie really. i think that's really really important i i think it's a i think if oliver stone directs this movie with leonardo dicaprio it's an insanely different movie um and much much worse and much less interesting uh mary Heron and guinevere turner are really really talented artists in their own right but also just the fact that they're women i think is crucial to this movie yeah i agree with you yeah um anyway gwen turner like mary heron kind of you just call her gwen yeah that's kind of what she was known as in the 90s like she's credited as guinevere turner but they always referred to her as gwen turner all right yeah in fact uh speaking of kevin smith the character that joey lauren Adams plays in uh, Mallrats is named Gwen Turner and it's named what? after her. He was yeah. obsessed. He was obsessed with her, yeah. Um, anyway, she went on to write for the L Word and she was also in that and then famously also wrote that movie Blood Rain. <laughs> oh, Blood Rain. <laughs> yeah, Blood Rain. But uh, I don't know. She's done, I think, more acting than, than writing and directing since um, her initial foray. But, uh, all right. Anyway, it came out April 14th, 2000. I think I said that on a budget of $7 million. It made $34.3 million at the box office. It was an indie darling. Uh, but it came out at number 116 at the box office for the year 2000 between Bait with Jamie Foxx and The Next Best Thing which is a movie about Madonna falling in love with her gay best friend played by Rupert Everett, which I've wow. seen. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's a very bad movie, Logan. You shouldn't watch that. Okay, take my advice. Maybe I will watch it. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Um, next, let's talk about the movie. Yeah, let's do it. How many times have you seen this movie? That's a good question. I'll tell you what. I didn't see it right when it came out. I don't really remember why. I didn't have interest. Maybe Christian Bale. He wasn't a star. Wow, <laughs> you, know, you would have if Leo was Lion Yeah, Lionsgate might have been right. You know, <laughs> I saw the fucking beach. Well, but, uh, anyway, um, I you know who I watched it with for the first time. I this I'm just remembering this right now. It was on a New Year's, like I think New Year's Day. Okay. And I was hanging out with my good friend Josh Merlis. 
Yeah, who you know, Josh. Yeah, who you know as a listener of our Buffy podcast, the MVP of the Buffy podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. He had it on like tape or DVD or something, and uh, we watched it together. I remember we were in a bed together <laughs> watching <the> American <laughs> Psycho. All right, and um, and I loved it uh, like immediately. It's a great movie. Um, couldn't believe I hadn't seen it before. I mean, it was only like probably two or three years later, but still, I was like, how am I, how am I been ignoring this movie? I would have loved it. Um, since then, I've probably watched it, I'll go with three times. So maybe four oh, wow. times in total. Okay. I saw it once when I was like 16 or 17. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I just sent you a photo. Okay. I want you to open it open your text messages and tell the audience what i sent you um as of september 22nd 2017 according to this tweet over six years ago okay logan had a phone case that was patrick bateman's business card pretty cool right (laughs) it's pretty cool yeah that was my phone case for like two years. I have a, and then I was I like, a good phone is this case a bad too, phone bro. case? Like, do people, no, people it's a not want to talk to me if I have uh, this phone case? You know what? A woman, like a smart woman, seeing We're that. For the hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think if they saw a dude with a Patrick. But Bates I was in on case, it. It wasn't No, like, I know. I know. But I think they'd wonder. Like, right. if he goes this hard as to get a <laughs> phone case, maybe he's not in on it. Maybe he's really into Patrick Bateman. It could go one of two ways, really. Yeah. But, yeah, I had a, I had a phone case. I thought that was the coolest thing ever when I had it. It was, like, my prized possession for a few months. But, uh, yeah, lo- I loved this movie. And still, it, it all came back to me. Like, when I was watching it, I was, like, eight scenes deep. And I was like, I, I remember everything. Like, it, it, it was just hitting, hitting everything. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I sort of have the same relationship. It, it it really fires on all cylinders for about an hour. It, like uh, my ev- one complaint, it feels like a little bit like sometimes it's just like uh like a series of scenes a little bit. I know what you bit. mean, but it doesn't bother me because yeah, it's not really every complaint. scene is so well constructed and it's and really written. more of a character piece than a plot movie. So yeah. Like the series of scenes are doing enough to add up to the character. Like I'm learning more about the character in each scene, and that's really what matters to me. That's the through line. The only plot is the foe keeps coming in, and but that's really it. Yeah, but like Bale is like never even treated as being particularly concerned about that until the very end. Yeah, it's true. I love I love the part early on where he's like. I think he's doing it to like put up the facade, but he he asked Defoe, he's like, "What are you here for again?" And and then, but then, uh, uh, Chloe Sevigny, how do you say her name? Chloe Sevigny. Like you always say, yeah, we always say it. Interesting. She comes in, and he like he like puts the coaster down, like he's more worried about that than like the detective here trying to research the person he yeah, just murdered. Yeah, like all that, the little details there is just so good. But by the way, if you like this movie, you should watch the movie. It came out 2023 another like character piece about like uh, like some like just like a selfish guy watch the movie passages yeah i saw you you reviewed that on letterboxd recently and i wasn't that familiar with it and it did sound interesting it was short me. so i was like i'll just it was like 90 minutes long and i Word. i loved it that was great have you seen the rules of attraction nope you should watch that because i, I got like halfway through this movie and i was like Oh, yeah, there's another movie based on a Brett Easton Ellis novel that has a Bateman character in it. It's it's almost a spinoff of American Psycho. Like, we could have, if we wanted to, done it for this episode. Hey, maybe. Uh, maybe. Well, all right, so what we'll do is I'll watch it, and we can just talk about it on Hey, I'm Watching Here sometime. Okay. Check that out. $5 a month on the Patreon. You get yeah, it every week. Hey, I'm Watching Here. We'll do that. Hey, last last week we did a whole bonus episode on the Patreon about the Happy Time Murders. If you want some with uh, Tim, with if you like, shut up, Tim. Yeah, yeah. If you want some more Muppet talking. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, talk to me about American Psycho a little bit. I've been talking forever. Give me your, some your uh, notes, all. All right. So Patrick Bateman, he's engaged to Reese Witherspoon. He's got a group of friends. They like to go out to eat. 
together. Who are his yeah. friends? We've got Justin Thoreau, right? Yeah, Justin Thoreau, a very young Justin Thoreau. They're you all got very young. Josh Lucas in there. Just Reuniting, my, my well, I guess not Josh yet. Lucas. With Reese, they 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 go on to do Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet together. Home Alabama. That's a great point. I, you you think they talked a lot about American Psycho on the set of Sweet Home Alabama? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think it came up. <laughs> uh, all right, who else is his friend? Uh, this guy Bill Sage. Oh yeah, Bill Sage. Sure. He. I feel like he's in Hal Hartley movies. I didn't feel like I didn't know him, but. They're all pals. They all go out to eat. And then there's that other guy who like comes around here and there, the gay fella. Played oh, by yeah. uh, But, but they're not Matt friends. They, they don't like that guy. Oh, they don't. He, yeah. He's just he's engaged to Reese Witherspoon's best friend who Christian Bale's having an affair with. Well, that's right. I'm glad you've retained all of this. So so he's just there because of her. Anyway, I just looked up Bill Sage, uh, and he's been in a ton of shit. What a career, honestly. But I was also right. He's in a bunch of Harley movies. Okay, that's cool. Um, he's in Ned Rifle, so we covered him on the show. Yeah. And uh, Jared Leto's hanging around. He plays Paul Allen. Very oh, iconic yeah, name at this point, in my opinion. Paul Is it? Allen. I think so. Okay. He's kind of, he, Jared you. Leto's kind of Paul Allen to me. He's just kind of Paul Allen, but but anyway, wait. Uh, funny, Jared Leto. Yeah, how so? That's his. I mean, that's just his iconic role. I think. Paul you Allen. think so? Really? Well, I mean, I guess like Dallas Buyers, but I never saw. I I feel like every time I watch American Psycho, I, I guess it's Joker. Jared Leto's in it, and then he's like third build in the credits, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I I I think I think of him as um. The Joker. Uh, no, uh, my so-called life. I never saw that. Yeah, or I, I guess know. I don't know Dallas Buyers Club now or something. Yeah, but he won he, an Oscar for that. My favorite thing about him, Jordan Catalano. Sorry, I was trying to think of his character's name from My So-Called Life, and it just came to me like a bolt from the blue. It was very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it, my favorite thing about him is that all, they all. Uh, like all the guys are so similar and they're also also conceited that they don't care about getting to know each other that he just he gets him he gets bateman confused with this other guy so he he keeps confusing defoe with like the story that he tells because he mixes up the the two guys that are similar i think yeah. that's a funny part of the movie i like the scenes with the guys talking to each other in a group because there's like no through line to the conversation it's like everybody's just out for themselves and like everybody's having their own conversation in the midst of the conversation christian bale's able to fit in lines about like wanting to murder people and like nobody really <laughs> gives it a second glance it's great. I, except i feel like justin thoreau is like the most respected one out of everybody like i think bale says early on like justin thoreau is, is my most interesting friend <laughs> right uh, right that's, that's like true. a line he has but uh, but yeah so that's the friend group we have uh chloe sevigny she's the receptionist I know. I I I'm so happy every time I watch this because I never remember that she survives the movie. Yeah, he lets her live, just out of the g kindness of his heart. I think. Yeah, he tells her to leave. I'm, s but I'm so glad that in that moment she listens to him because she could easily be like, "I know it's wrong, but I, I want to you. be here." Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I don't know. He's saying it pretty intense. So I, I think she like feels something's off. Yeah. So shout out to her for surviving the movie. Yeah. Um, who else do we have? We have uh, Willem Dafoe, as we said. By the way, something crazy about her character. She was actually, she was so stupid. She didn't know who Ted Bundy was. He says like Ted Bundy. She's like, who's Ted Bundy? What is that? I don't know. Like, how do you not know who Ted Bundy is? Not everybody knows. Not everyone like gives a shit about serial killers. But you don't even know who Ted Bundy is. That's how you end up dead. You don't even know who Ted Bundy is. I didn't know who Ted Bundy was until probably I was like in college or something. Well, this woman is, she has a job. She's like in college, past college. Yeah, but it's also the 80s. You know, you don't like pick up information the same way. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> struck me as odd, but that's fine. Um, so what, what year is it supposed to be in this movie? I'm not sure. I think it's like 87. You just pulled that out of your ass? 
Seems like 87. Okay, great. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm glad yeah. somebody that was born in 1998 thinks it feels <laughs> like 1987. Feels like Die Hard hasn't come out yet. Okay. <laughs> they were pre-Die Hard. Okay, I like that. So he kills... I By the way, I hate the part where he kills the dog. Ugh. That's so sad. I know. I hate it, too. It makes oh. me sad. And it's I, so early on. You can't root for him the rest of the movie. And then in American Psycho 2, Logan, she put a cat in a microwave. And that made me even sadder. But she lived. I know. Thank Wait, God no, she, she no, 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 no. She, did, she didn't do that. Didn't Brian do that? That was her. What? You know you're lying. No, no, no. That was her. Brian was a red herring. It was never Brian. What? He he literally leaves her room. He he leaves her her room, goes to Mila Kunis's room and he's wearing that same hoodie. I know. That that was like It's like the same herring. shot, too. It, that was supposed to be like in Scream when you see the sheriff's boots and it's like, "Oh, is but this was there? real. This was like a real thing. I thought I witnessed him go from her her, her room where he murdered to no. then the other person's room." No. They fooled me. They got wow. me. Wow. Yeah, I didn't like that part with the cat in the microwave. But it lived. It's fine. <laughs> uh, all right. So he it was a so, cute cat. It was a cute cat. Has there ever been no, an ugly cat? My cat. Oh um, yeah, you never sent me a picture of your cat. You oh, got to yeah. do that at some point. I know. I haven't. I haven't even taken a picture of my cat. Well, yet. you got to do that. You haven't showed your your parents or anybody. Look at my cute cat. Or Henry. You no, I've like told ev- everyone knows I have a cat, but no nobody wants seen to her see. Yet. Nobody says, show me a picture. My mom has asked for pictures on multiple occasions, and I have not obliged. <laughs> All right. Well, she's going to listen to this and know that I got a photo, and now she's going to really want a photo. No, no. Listen, mom, if you're listening to this, which I think you are, uh, he's not getting a photo either. Don't even What? You it. told me that I could. Yeah, you. Once I take a photo. We'll say that you're not going to do it, it but then everybody. actually do it. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So he... <laughs> Kills Paul Allen, right? Yeah. He hates that motherfucker. So he kills him, and then that's he goes... The, that's the he, one where he's talking about Hugh Lewis in the news? I think so. He does it He does it so many times. He talks about Whitney. He talks about right. uh, Phil Collins. He does it constantly. Okay, like his, but, that's like I, his thing. but I'm a fan of Huey Lewis in the news, Logan. And I just want to say that... I think this is that one, yeah. His monologue about Huey Lewis in the news is genuinely brilliant and brought me a new understanding of that band and made me appreciate him to be square on a deeper level i only know him from back to the future well that's how i got to know him you know that was the first song of by huey that i ever heard <laughs> and i loved it and so uh, of course i i purchased the seminal album sports and <laughs> then i got into the band yeah all right yeah. well i'm glad there's so many Indeed. people. How do you know everybody? What do you mean? I don't know. You like you're like you say that you are there, who are like people that you don't like. What do you mean? Like musicians? Yeah, musicians. Like you're always like, oh, I like them. Like who do you dislike? John Mayer. I guess Phil Collins, who he also <laughs> yeah. talks about. You don't like Phil, Phil Collins. Collins. John Mayer, you said? Yeah. Why not? Ed Sheeran. I keep on waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. You Simple like plan. I don't know. Name bands. Name like five bands. Simi Sonic. <laughs> They're, They're okay. They're uh, okay. I don't know. Why don't you like John Mayer? He's fucking douchey. His, his music One sounds Republic. dishonest. You like Hate One him. Republic? Hate him. No. Bad. The, the Fray. Bad. No. Oh. All right. Uh, so what else happens in this movie? We kill some people. We take some people back to our hotel. Or not back to our hotel. Back it's to so our funny. Apartment. I'm sorry. It's so funny hearing you say who don't I like musically because there was a time in my life like when I was like a snobby douchebag like 20 year old where people would have the opposite feel like what do you fucking like just sitting there talking shit. But now and, you like uh, things. Yeah, you don't like the new things I guess right. No I like some new things. I'll okay. tell you what, Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift is a fucking banger. <laughs> You've said that before. Yeah. yeah I, really I'm sorry, like I heard it again last night, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's hot on my mind. All right. So I, what was up with the part where he pretends to be Paul Allen 
and he picks up the two or he picks up a hooker and then he like calls an escort but then he goes to his apartment I yeah. understand what his plan was there like I feel like he's he's pretending to be Paul Allen to say like Paul Allen's still out there he was out there getting hookers after he supposedly was dead so he can't right. be dead but why does he go to his own apartment like so if they go to those hookers and they say so you were with Paul Allen where, where were you they would go to Patrick Bateman's apartment but then later he does go to Paul Allen's apartment like he he corrects it and he takes hookers to that apartment I didn't understand what that whole plan was yeah, I guess I didn't really think about it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really get it. But anyway, uh, what what happens? What are some What are some great lines in this movie? I wrote down a few quotes. Get, well, give me one. Uh, I have to return some videotapes. Well, always... yeah, yeah, that's a classic. He says that a few times. It's almost like a catchphrase. Don't just um, stare at it. Eat it. That always stuck with me. When's that? It's when the two girls, like he tells one of them to like bend over and the other one's like dancing. Oh, like, I love that. Sabrina, yeah. don't just stare at it, eat it. <laughs> that one of those That's girls, great. by the way, is um uh Guinevere Turner. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe the one dancing. There's Sabrina and it's, Christy. It's the Christy's one more that, of a character. It's the one that he like knows. You know, yeah, you know Sabrina. how like Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh wait. That might be Elizabeth later on at the end of the movie. That's when they actually go to Je- to Paul Allen's apartment, and he has like the redhead there, and she's kind of like snobby. Yes, kinda, yes. I, I think that, that that's Guinevere Turner. That's what I'm thinking of. Wow. All right, Guinevere Turner. All right. I see why. Uh, why uh, Kevin Smith? Was, <laughs> yeah. Was why so K Dog was enamored? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have. I'm a child of divorce. Give me a break. <laughs> that's funny. That <laughs> that's what he a says. good one. Yeah, uh, I like uh, when he says Courtney is almost perfect looking. <laughs> <laughs> who is Courtney? She's the one who's d- with the gay guy, but t- but they're having an affair oh, together. Right, 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 right. That, that's sort of like his love. He really lo- He really likes her a lot. He sort of know. I like the part where he notices like he he gets up after they have sex and and she's like she starts smoking and he's like you smoke and she's like I ha- I always have you just never noticed and I like that because that makes me that that's like a moment. Where you think he's like a little more human because he's he's noticing for the first time, but it's actually he's like going down the fall. So I don't really know what they're trying to say there. Um, but I, I think she, me I is, think she brings some humanity out of him if he could just hmm. grip onto it, but he doesn't. So if um, he just stayed there, like if they had spent the day together, maybe that could have helped. Damn, yeah. I really like that moment though. That's a sweet moment. Me too. I, I I like that actress Samantha Mathis. I've, I've of course anytime I see her in anything, all I can see is Daisy from the live action Super Mario Brothers movie. Well, I've of course never seen that. Well, we'll hey man, when they find when they make that sequel to uh, that shitty cartoon, we'll watch <laughs> the live action Super Mario Brothers. I am pumped for it. It is the only reason I am pumped for it. I would usually get upset at, shitty movie. at someone calling an animated film a cartoon, but I don't really care in that instance. Call it, call it whatever you want to. <laughs> I, I, I sort of do that to be snobby. Like I, I specifically <laughs> talk down to animated films by calling them cartoons. But not the good ones, you wouldn't say. Um. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't do that to, to my boys at Pixar. Right. Or right. to my good friend Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah. You still you see the boy in the heron, you see that one? Not yet, but uh I will eventually. Yeah. Waiting for it to drop on Ross <laughs> uh, I like uh he's when he says when they're talking about mergers and, and acquisitions, he says, I'm into murders and executions. Yes. Another great and, one. And she just acts like she heard him, but when she repeats the line back to him, she says <laughs> mergers and acquisitions. And it's almost like, did he say mergers and acquisitions? Because you never know. Like the, We're seeing the film from the perspective of his brain, which is clearly like fucked up, mm-hmm. and he doesn't always understand what's actually happening. You know, the big twist at the end of the movie that at least Paul Allen... Or I wouldn't say it's a twist. Is it, well, what is it? Like, all the people he thought he killed are alive. It's just... it. No, but... 
I wouldn't say that necessarily. I would say it's it's just all up in the air at the end. You're just like this guy has gone so inside his own self that right. he has, he no, has idea no idea what is reality, reality and what's not. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's more what it is. I don't know if yeah. it's like nothing's true. I think it's just like what is. Who knows? That's fair. But um. Anyway, yeah. So we're seeing th- this from the perspective of a guy who's lost touch with reality. So. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? How did I get on this? The murders and and I, murders and executions. <laughs> oh right, thing. right. So like we don't even know like what comes out of his mouth is real and what's not. Yeah, but I I love that because he sees like oh she's so stupid he takes her home and then cut to the next scene he's playing with her hair and and he puts it in his pocket like oh that's another one that he got. Uh, yeah, good. I like that too. And they do that early on, the same sort of deal with the sheets. Like he sees a girl and they cut to him with the sheets. He takes the sheets. So that's another great scene. This is just littered with scene after scene. It's yeah. amazing. I really love the absence of violence in the movie that is like in some ways more disturbing than real violence. I, yeah. I think that shot of him with the hair is one of them. But just that one where he has the three way and then they fall asleep afterwards. And when they wake up, Oh yeah, uh, when, they're they're like, can we go now? And he goes, not yet. And he opens up like a little chest full of like sharp. And and later she she reveals like she had to go to the hospital and like yeah. she might have to have like a surgery done or something because right of, like the that, next, that was the dark. next cut is like them leaving the house and they both look like they'd been through something. <laughs> yeah, and, that was horrifying. Uh, yeah, yeah, and like I. Imagine like e- the Eli Roth version of this movie, or, <laughs> you know, where like you see like let's just knock dissect. knock a little bit. That would just be like knock knock <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But they don't murder a, in the a reverse cut. knock knock, a reverse knock knock a little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't reverse knock knock. It's still knock knock. No, well, a reverse knock knock would be who's there. <laughs> 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 oh boy. Uh, but so and but then he he gets her again, and he gets that other woman, Elizabeth. Uh, I forgot. Oh, you said that's Guinevere, right? And yeah. that's the woman that he chases with the chainsaw. And, oh, another yeah. thing where you can tell, like, not everything is is reality because the way he like dropping that chainsaw down and it actually killing her, like that going through her, like that's crazy. And also, would a chainsaw still be on if you drop it? I have no idea. I have no idea. But I mean, Possibly. even before that, they are knocking on every door in that apartment building. He is wielding a chainsaw and running down the hall nude. Like, there's no way no one saw that. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's probably the most absurd sequence. In, not absurd, like stupid. Absurd, like no, but like insane. that's the that's well, like, the first t- t- moment. T- that's the first moment in the movie narratively where I'm like, what's going on here? I'm I'm not sure everything's real. Yes, I agree, and I guess that's really the start of the end. Um, yeah, and you don't really like the the last bit. I think it, what does kinda... it start with? Feed me the cat, the ATM machine. Yeah, sort of like that whole night, him like running in and out of those buildings and shooting the doorman. Like it's it's escalation just chaos. It just feels like escalation because it's the end of the movie, but it doesn't go. But it anywhere. works with what they're going for, I think. I think the sequence works as a sequence like it's well edited and it's intense and it's entertaining and Christian Bale is great, but to me it just doesn't go anywhere and they kind of just punt the end of the movie and it might be from the novel like i'm not blaming anybody but it just feels incomplete to me always every time i watch this i i compare it to I no country for little. old men in my review but i mean no country for old men is obviously like a pretty perfect movie but for me killing that character off screen and then ending on a rambling monologue is not equal Disagree. to what the lead up of that film was. And it, this movie that it, it's just it's well done and it's fun and interesting. It just doesn't pop. I think I like me. both of those endings more than you. I think 
I think we need the insanity of him losing his mind because then you know, because then you you have to have the insanity to know that he truly is insane, you know? Because I, I think we get that he's insane because he kills people. But but you have to know. <laughs> but the the whole ending is that this guy becomes untethered from reality, and I think that you need the entire last sequence where it's truly insane for that. Yes, it just that just might be the part of the movie I'm least interested in, and that might be yeah. my fault, honestly. Because like I do agree with of, you though. If it is the parts just... of the movie I love are like the social and class critique, like the scene with the. The fucking business cards, I think, is genius. Like, I I mm-hmm. love every moment of that scene. It is delightful. Um, what about but, the scene where they're talking about something that you've talked about, where you can't be? They're like, well, they're 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 doing it to about women specifically, but you're more about people. You can't be talented if you're attractive. Is like a thing that you say. Yeah, well, they were saying it in a really misogynistic way, which right, is yours like, is more broad. Women, women that aren't attractive, is like had broad. to learn to to have talents. Uh, oh, very good, Logan. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just always believe that I'm I'm skeptical <laughs> of of handsome talent of handsome behind the scenes people. Okay, you so I mean? actors that they have to be handsome most of the time. No, I mean not necessarily, right. but there's a lot of talented and handsome actors. But yeah. like an editor can't be handsome, or a or a writer. Not a really good one. <laughs> not not one of the good ones. Because <laughs> <laughs> if they were, because if if they were, well, I don't know. I don't really know. That's interesting though. But because people right. who grow up really good looking grow up really confident. And so they end up doing things that are more outward. I don't know. Like, I knew someone in New York who was really, t- uh, like, beautiful, and she was, like, a sound editor. And I always thought that was interesting. Like, what? how'd she end up doing that? <laughs> That's like me. I'm beautiful, but a sound editor. <laughs> you are. <okay. laughs> You're uh, a beautiful we... podcaster. I, I I used to say that about us, me and Henry. Like I yeah. I used to but think you, we're the yeah, best you, looking podcast. You'd say like, yeah, we podcast, but we also fuck. That was the thing you used to say. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, we Still watched Texas true. Chainsaw. That's oh cool. yeah, yeah. We do. The, I like the crossword puzzle where he's just writing meat, bones, yeah. death. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's funny. We didn't talk about Willem Dafoe at all. No, we didn't. Hey, I, I saw yesterday he got his Hollywood Walk of Fame star. And you know what I thought? How's he not had it this whole time? Well, I think you have like to Daniel pay Radcliffe for it. Like Daniel Radcliffe has one. I think you have to pay for it. You, oh, really? He just said, fuck this. I bet he waited until they just uh, had, they just said, all right, we have to get Willem one. Like no, he just no, stood no. his ground too it, long. It, no, it, he's doing it now because um the oscar nominations are coming up and he's in four things right is he yeah oh yeah he is yeah so like that's always what they do with these hollywood walk of fame stars they time it like either with the release of a new project which it will help with the uh, promotion of or around award season if has he ever like, won? Wasn't he nominated like a lot recently, like at, at Eternals Gate or something, whatever that movie Flor- was called? Uh, he was nominated the for Florida, Florida Project. Project. Was he nominated right. for the Lighthouse or something? I feel like he was nominated a lot recently, but I'm not sure if he's a he's a winner. I'll tell you right now. I feel like no. Willem Dafoe is a four time Oscar nominee. Never a bride. <laughs> wow. But Bale won, right? Didn't he win for? The rest, not the wrestler. What's that movie called? The fighter. The fighter, fighter. yeah, because he lost all that weight. Look, yeah, another time he lost all the weight. Yeah, and wasn't that no? Is that between Batman's or is that after Batman? Uh, that was between Batman. Batman's. That was Whoa. between Batman two and three, I believe. Did he do the Machinist between Batman's also? No, that was prior to he. He had to gain all the weight You're back right. that he had lost from the machine. Yeah, I'm thinking of the Batman prestige. Begins. In the prestige, he does another weight thing where he plays twins, and one of them he plays fatter than the other one. Does he? He he I like never went, yep. That. He lost like ten or fifteen pounds between shooting the the twin scenes. So one of them's heavier than the other one. Bell is also a four time nominee, but he won his first time nominated. 
Yeah, Vice, Hustle, Hustle, American Hustle, something else. Big shirt. Big shirt. Big I never shirt. saw that. I never saw the big shirt. <laughs> yeah, you're you're good. No, I got a, a lot of big actors are in it. I'll watch it at some point. Yeah. And it won Best Picture, didn't it? Big shirt. Oh no, no. that was Spotlight. Spotlight <laughs> yeah. won Best Picture. Those are similar. Uh, all right. What are, are you those similar? I don't know. Are they not? Not really. Uh, I think they're both true stories. I guess. What are you gonna give it? Anything else? Talk. What else do we have to talk about? Anything? I don't else? know. I'm good. I give it a four. I thought kind of one weird part where I mentioned like it, how it's like a series of scenes, but there's one part where they do coke. It's Thoreau and Bale. And then they come back and they talk to these girls at the, the that, that's the part where they talk about murders and murders and executions. Yeah. But then they, they like do coke and then they sit down and they gesture to each other about doing coke. And it made me think, did like, did they edit? Was that out of sequence? But they thought they should be on coke for the scene, so oh. they put the coke part first. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I maybe questions. that's possible. I, I didn't think about it. All right, so you're gonna go well, four. A lot of I'll coke go five. flying around recently. I also saw that great coke scene this week in Maestro, where mm -hmm. let me let me serve you, let me serve you the coke on this tray, darling, darling. Let me serve you, <laughs> <laughs> darling, oh darling, <laughs> darling, da, darling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you watch going gloves the other night uh no no i i couldn't bear it yeah i heard it was but, terrible but yeah i heard it was terrible too but i looked up the winners and i gotta say not bad oh not bad yeah he lost cooper b coop so you had to love that one yeah, no, but I, I thought no, they I did agree. a pretty good job. Like, the winners for both uh, movies and TV. Oppenheimer's going to sweep the Oscars. Yeah, you're totally right. But I, I felt like it it looked respectable to me, all those winners lined up next to each it's other. It's a great year. Tough to, tough to get it so wrong this year. A lot of good stuff, I thought. You don't understand. There have been amazing <laughs> years where they have gotten it. Oh, I thought last year we gave it to everything everywhere all at once over like tar and stuff. We had some good movies last year. Yeah. This has been a stronger year though, I think. Overall. I agree. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Um so I'll go five, uh, you'll go four. But I but I, I, I agree with you a lot of the complaints that you had. I do agree. But my MVP, you gotta go bail. Yeah, you gotta go. Uh, Bale's amazing in this movie. He's unreal. I mean, the star make it's crazy that it took him like five years to get Batman after this. Like this movie should have launched him to the fucking stratosphere. Yeah, honestly. And if you were if you were to do a bail ranking, I think you'd have to have this number one. The, the the one you'd have competing is probably The Dark Knight. But The Dark Knight is such a Joker movie, and this is such a bail movie. You'd have to go American Psycho first, I think. I uh, I read that some of the actors in the movie that didn't know Bale as much. They weren't sure what to make of the performance. They like he was so oddly robotic and stuff. And then like when they saw it in context with the character and the narration and stuff, everyone was just like, "Oh my god, he was another great movie with narration." I I heard my whole life, if you do narration, they're always bad. Bad all bad movies have narration. If it's got narration, it's gonna be bad. Here's another one, great movie with narration. Yeah, and American Psycho two, another great movie with narration. <laughs> let's talk about it wait who's the, <laughs> who's the lvp i i went with well, i don't want i don't want to go leto just because he's jared leto I, i'll go bill sage hey the, he's like the third friend and i like lucas yeah. and thoreau more i like bill sage though i can't go bill sage what do you reese I mean, no, sevigny no oh no the gay mathis his husband but that's kind of an interesting scene in the bathroom where he's he's gay and he thinks that he's trying to come on to him. Yeah, that's true. I think you just go Bill Sage and you don't look back. <laughs> I think you got to put it aside, your love for this guy. <laughs> or you want to go the homeless guy, one of the women No, I dies. like the homeless guy. The homeless guy is fucking Reggie Cathy from The Wire. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do then. You know everybody. That's the problem. I do. That is a problem. Like even like the the gay dude. Like I was considering him, but I like him too. He's in um, Big Love. You gotta put that aside. You have to just do it <laughs> just because we don't like Leto and, and other Valley, things. It's Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, what right, about I'll the go. the hookers? You dislike any of them? 
No, I liked them. I'll go with Bill Sage. All right. <laughs> Let's move on before you just have to think about it. Too much. Ah, okay. This... Oh, by the way, Ryder Strong give, gave it two stars. And Andy Heron, <laughs> even though Mary Heron, they share a name. He hasn't seen it or hasn't rated it, at least. <laughs> it is spelled differently, by the way. But anyway, yeah. continue. <laughs> and pronounced differently. So, Oh, is it? How so? Yeah. Heron Heron. Mm, nobody says Andy Heron. Oh, shut up. Andy Heron, that's not a thing. It's Heron. A Heron. But not that's the Heron. same thing. Come on. Okay. Andy Heron. <laughs> Mary Heron. Stop, stop it. <laughs> All right. Okay. There was never supposed to be an American Psycho 2, obviously. <laughs> you don't say. Um, yeah. There was this whole other movie called The Girl Who Wouldn't Die. Okay. Okay. That was the script. It was written by Karen Craig. Okay. okay. Uh, she didn't really go on too much. But uh, anyway, so they were making this movie. Lionsgate was hot on the movie. Okay. They hired Morgan J. Freeman to direct, who was uh, a little bit of a hotsy totsy at the time. And they hired Mila Kunis, who was on the rise from um, uh, that 70s show. Okay. Right. So that was the team. And they were going to make a and movie. And that called... one, Honey, I Shrunk, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves movie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that so we watched. They were going to make The Girl Who Wouldn't Die. Terrible title, by the way. <laughs> um, Morgan J. Freeman, if I may, was one of my favorite filmmakers around this time. Oh my gosh, how? I loved him. Uh, he had gotten his start in the indie world. Uh, when he was in college, he got an internship working with Todd Salons at Todd mm -hmm. Salons' production company. And salons then hired him to be his assistant director or second assistant director on welcome to the dollhouse okay and that was so successful that he got a little buzz off of that and he went on to make his own movie called hurricane streets okay. which is amazing okay it's great it's it's sort of like kids but not as like fucked up not as edgelordy <laughs> Yeah. Um and uh then he followed that up with this film Desert Blue, which I think did like no noise at the box office at all, but like was great. Christina Ricci's in it. A lot of people are in it. It's a good cast. She's amazing, um, Christina Ricci. She sure is, man. I think she made that like the same year as like the opposite of sex too. Like she was just on fire. What's she doing these days? Is she on a show or anything? Yeah, she's on uh, Yellow Jackets. That's what. I, that's kind of what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Um. And she didn't get fucking bored and get asked to be killed off like a fucking moron. Who did that? <sighs> Melanie. Spoil Lewis. Spoilers for Yellow Jackets. Julia Lewis. And Whoa! spoilers. Okay. Um, Which, what'd she do after though? What'd she leave for? We'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, Freeman, he, he had a little bit of buzz around this time. But, you know, Desert Blue had failed at the box office, so he's willing to make someone else's script. That's basically how he'd gotten to this point. Um, then Lionsgate, they get like iffy about the promotional stuff they're like mila kunis is on the rise but she's not like a big star what if we take some of our intellectual property <laughs> and graft it onto this film uh so they still have the rights to american psycho and they just decide it's gonna be an american psycho sequel alex sanger takes a second writing credit on the movie and that person was just an executive at Lionsgate, like an executive at Lionsgate just took the script and made it an American psycho sequel, gave it back to Morgan J. Freeman and was like, here's your movie now. Yeah. The, I mean, the stuff at the beginning makes no sense. 
And I think I think that's why I got confused that maybe that guy was a killer because she says I became obsessed with with serial killers, so I wanted to kill the serial killers. And then the first kill we see is that guy killing that woman. So I thought maybe he would be the serial killer of the movie. I remember thinking that in, in the moment, like I was like I was like, oh, I thought she was the serial killer in the movie. Is she gonna kill a bunch of serial killers? But yeah, it's weird. The, like the way they force feed the the first part into the rest of the movie. But anyway, continue. Oh, and that's it, really. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I thought they did a great job, young Mila Kunis. Really? Yeah, that she looked a lot like Mila Kunis. Okay, I oh, thought it was okay. Didn't no, really no, strike me as good or bad. No. Okay. Um. Anyway, so this movie comes out June eighteenth, two thousand and two. It has a budget of ten million dollars, which is actually higher than the fucking original. Mila probably got paid more than Bale did. You're probably right about that, or at least 50 and. The uh, same. And it ended up going uh, straight to DVD here in uh, America. Yep. Have you in seen it? In some places, it's I had never seen it, no. In some places, it's called American Psycho 2 All-American Girl. But I don't know. It's like a die harder, die harder situation. <laughs> Wait, so other places, it's just American Psycho 2? Yeah. Oh, okay. I always thought it was All-American Girl. Mm-hmm. But in the movie, it doesn't say that. Anyway, all right. Start me off. How how, does all right? So remember Patrick Bateman? Remember that guy? Well, he gets killed by like an (laughs) eleven-year-old. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. I don't know why Patrick Bateman would be having dinner with her. I I just really has dinner with a babysitter, not her. The babysitter brought her along. Yeah, but why? Like, I don't think Patrick Bateman would do it with like a kid. I I don't. It's really stupid. It's really dumb. I wish that there was no narration in that scene so I could hear what song uh, Patrick Bateman was monologuing about. That would have been helpful. But um, I actually thought they did a good job in that it looked a little like Christian Bale. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was convincingly Christian Bailey. More than that shot of the Muppets Most Wanted where we pick up where the Muppets ended and it's Siegel and Amy Adams. This was more right. believable than that moment, I guess. But I didn't really feel that strongly. But yeah, she's she kills him. Yeah. Patrick Bateman's dead. Patrick Bateman's dead. And basically, like they say, Patrick Bateman. I had no idea. Then became like a famous dead serial killer. You know, there were books written about him and, you know, they're discussing him in her criminology class or whatever. And, Mm And it's very weird. I I hate it. I, I you know, <laughs> as an American Psycho sequel, we mostly won't talk about this movie as an American Psycho sequel because it barely is. But as an American Psycho sequel, it is god awful. Yeah, it, it is. completely misunderstands the original movie's intent. Completely, I said completely yeah. twice, but it deserves it twice. But it's cool to know he he didn't get busted for all of his stuff and he went on to continue killing for a little while longer yeah you you like that he had another couple of years in him yeah a little bit because you can you could but you, i mean you could leave american psycho one thinking that he just lived the rest of his life killing which is kind of cool or you could think that i mean you could think whatever you want at the end of that one but yeah it was kind of cool. i feel like we jumped forward like a few years so he got a little a few a few more years of killing. Well, we jumped forward probably like eight years, right? Because oh, that's she's, a lot. She's got to be like 10 or 11 where she kills uh, Patrick Bateman. And then... No, I mean like, between movies. Oh. I mean like oh, how long did he have saying. between movies? No, it, I, it must have been... Okay, so this movie picks up. It's like 2002 and she's... That was in the 80s though. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm oh, saying sorry. this movie is 2002, and she's 18, okay? And she killed Patrick Bateman probably like eight years ago. So 1996, okay? So if you're presupposing mm. that American Psycho is 1987, that he goes on killing for a further nine years. Yeah, so that kind of makes me happy. Nine more years of killing <laughs> without getting busted, that's a pretty good run. Good for you, Patty. <laughs> but he does end up dead by an 11-year-old. Oh, I know, I know, but what a way to go. Yeah. With like an ice pick, right? 
she that- uses an ice pick a lot but but in the in the poster it's like a it's like a it's like a hook thing it's like a weird yeah, little hook i know it looks like she's like an urban legend or something i know what you did last american psycho <laughs> god mila kunis would have been perfect for i know what you did last summer yeah yeah she would have been good but so here we go she goes to school to become part of the fbi so she can kill serial killers and she her teacher is we haven't covered William. star trek but here he is <laughs> american psycho 2 bill shatner the chat yeah it's great to see him uh we covered him in miss congeniality oh that's true we've actually covered him <laughs> We're going all over the place with him but he's her professor and he is having an affair with one of the students this is the craziest plot of any movie ever just hear me out okay Th- this is the plot thrust of this movie she wants to fight serial killers okay that's mm-hmm. her goal ultimately. So she becomes a serial killer. I guess and the happen. reason that she becomes a serial killer is so she can get a job as a teacher's assistant in her freshman year of college. Exactly. Because she thinks that the teacher's assistant job will send her to Quantico at some point where she will be connected with the FBI. That's the, the plot problem. of this movie. <laughs> There's so much legwork to be done in the logic. Like the fact like why is this TA position that important? William Shatner seems to imply at some point that she's overstating the importance of the teacher's assistant position. I think he just doesn't get it. A lot of old people don't understand like the problems that young people have. Okay. Like to her, that I mean, to those to those people to, when you're in college, that is like the biggest deal in the world. You, that is totally fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then, <laughs> why does she? She wants to fight serial killers because she was a serial killer. She, because she killed a serial killer when she was a kid, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But then, like, how logically can she find it in her to become a serial killer? Well, sh- yeah. It's because she's a sociopath, I guess, which is what she's diagnosed as later. Yeah, we get good, into it all. Our, our good friend, the third build therapist. All of your problems is what the movie's about. I don't see an issue. No, I I know that all my problems are what the movie's about, but that just means the movie's about a whole (laughs) load of problems. Listen, I had a great time, honestly, watching this movie. I I did, too. I did, too. I I loved it. Uh, Genuinely. Like, I will... (laughs) This that was not my last time watching American Psycho two last night. Yeah. You you have not heard the last of me, American <laughs> Psycho two. But I mean, it is a wild ride. Yeah, she wants to kill, or she wants to protect people from the killers, so she becomes a killer in order to do so. It, Sometimes in order you have to, to go be, through. In, in, she becomes go through a shit killer. to get to the other side. Or she becomes a killer in order to become a TA, so that <laughs> she can fight serious. To have killers. a chance at, at killing the killers. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. This it's convoluted. Amazing. We have to just get over it. Also, a freshman as a TA, unheard of. It would. Well, they never say that. They say no. It'll. Years. It would only be a junior or senior, and she's like, "Yes, all right, I'll will it into existence." They're totally right. Of all the people that die in this movie, Gertie deserves it the least. She's the first woman. Yeah, all she's doing is passing along the information that it is crazy that a freshman would want to be a TA. Okay, and. Also, she kind of acts like maybe a per- a parent in Hannah Montana. She- what? I am sorry. I just felt that the Gertie character, the performance was broad in okay. a way that wasn't matching with some of the other. I thought you were going to surprise me, film. like she was in here. No, 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 no. But I know I both no the parents in Hannah Montana. Yeah, so yeah, yeah no, you'd know better than I. I'm just yeah, talking it's about Billy Ray her, Cyrus her... and Brooke Shields. I don't understand. <laughs> It's Brick Shields. She she died, but yeah. Wait, on Hannah Montana, she died. Either oh. she died or they divorced. She's not in the show. 
Okay, so she, she comes just, in, like, it. shows up like once. She's a in a few episodes. Like, hey, I'm Brick Shield. I don't remember if it's a flashback or real, but she's in a few episodes. Wow, they must have covered that in the documentary that I watched. Brooke Shields colon Pretty Baby, but I, I doubt remember. it. <laughs> Her few episodes of Hannah Montana. Yeah, maybe they didn't. They didn't even really talk about Suddenly Susan that much, which was very <laughs> disappointing to me. I mean, they did a little. It was good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, Lindy Booth. I mentioned Cry Wolf. She's sort of playing the same character, and that one she's having an affair with John Bon Jovi. Excuse the me, teachers, the teachers, the professor. That's very true, but I would like you to say the full title of that film. Cry underscore wolf. <laughs> thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. And here she's just playing the same character in college having an affair with but William Shatner, not John Bon Jovi. Yeah, it's a trade down, I would say. Although I guess Cry Wolf that was afterwards. Later. So yeah, <laughs> she traded up <laughs> from the Shat to Bon Jovi. Was mm-hmm. Shatner doing Boston Legal at this time? I'm not sure. Boston Legal. I think the practice might have still been on the air. Because remember, like, the Boston Legal guys were introduced in the last season of The Practice. Boston Legal is 04. The practice is on. Okay, so pr- he would have been on the 03, 04 season of The Practice. So right after this. it was This was like rock bottom for him. And he was like, I got to do TV. All right. I don't know a lot about William Shatner. I just know of him from Star Trek. And well, Miss I mean- Congeniality, too. <laughs> but the second one or the first one? It might be the first one. He's in both of them. Oh, he's in both of them. I'm wow. pretty sure at least the first one. No, I think you're right. I, think, I actually think you're right. Yeah. But uh, all right, uh, so we killed every one time guy. I pass by. Every time I pass by the Treasure Island Casino, um, in Las Vegas, I think about Miss Congeniality too, armed and fabulous. You don't think about the Muppets? I'd probably think about the Muppets. <laughs> the Muppets Treasure Island. Yeah, I think about I Gonzo. Guess. And Rizzo. That's their big movie, I think. <laughs> That's true. They're a spotlight film. I think so, yeah. That was that one was okay. Yeah, it was all right. The, it, I the mean, kid it was like was the annoying. second worst one. The yeah. kid was annoying. Anyway. So Brian, he's dead. We kill Brian with a condom, and then we say ribbed for her pleasure. I hated it. I hated uh, that. But what do you think about the the Mila Kunis voiceover, by the way? You're just listening to oh, Meg. Oh, it's bad. The whole yeah. Movie. Clara was my babysitter. I was only 12 years old, naive, and somewhat trusting. But all that was about to change. You know how some babysitters take you to the movies or rollerblading in the park? Mine brought me along on a date with the serial killer, Patrick Bateman. Not my idea of a romantic evening. What's weird about Mila Kunis in this movie is that she genuinely grows into a great actress, occasionally Oscar-worthy, okay? Once. More than once, right? You you think Black just Swan. Black Swan? What else was there? I, mean, I was thinking about it. That's like her one big thing. Aside from that, she hasn't really had a, other acclaimed performances. I don't think. Um, I didn't do. Ju- I didn't research. Jupiter it, Ascending. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Bad. I guess you're right. Look at this. It's really not as impressive a resume. But I think she might have an upcoming thing with uh with somebody. Oh no, she. I think she was in like the. Isn't she canceled now? Because she defended Danny Masterson. Well, and her husband like groomed her and stuff, and that's weird. Yeah, uh, a lot of weird stuff with Mila Kunis. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. You're yeah. not wrong. Um. Anyway, where are we? The her- oh, I think we were what talking I was about her voice. Say over. what I was gonna say is she grows into a really good actress, regardless of anything, regardless of how great her career is. Um, I uh, I think she's really bad in this movie. <laughs> I, she's I, she's my MVP. She's your. I, I'm not gonna say that. Like she's not a bright spot for me in this movie. Like I really did not. I thought enjoy she was fun performance. I thought she was like good high school girl. Not good I, like psycho sociopath maybe. I don't know. I to me I feel like what they're I mean, going for in this movie is Tracy Flick from Election actually starts killing people. Yeah, that yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and I mean, think about how much better Reese Witherspoon would be in this movie. <laughs> Imagine Sarah Michelle Gellar. She'd be great. She would have been amazing. We probably, and this would have been the right time. We could have, we could have gotten her for it, possibly. Yeah, we could have made like four or five more American Psycho movies with Sarah Michelle Gellar. So fucking think about what could have been. Yeah, 
Or a douche coup. Imagine douche coup as American Psycho. <laughs> I don't know if that works. What are you talking about? <laughs> douche coup could do anything in the world. I know you. I saw a photo of her that. the other day. She is, she looks amazing. <laughs> like, like a recent photo. Wow. I don't know where it was, but it looks great. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we ha- we have a psychiatrist, right? She's like, maybe I'm crazy. I'm killing people. So yeah, she goes this to a psychiatrist. fucking guy. This is the most Canadian actor I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. <laughs> okay, was he on Smallville? He must have been. I I don't know. I looked him up and like I didn't really know him from anything. Um, I didn't really know anybody from anything in this movie, to be honest. Like, I know there's Lindy, whatever Booth. Mm-hmm. There, you know, Shatner and Mila Kunis, yes. yes. And I knew the kid who played, was it Bobby that she strangled Brian. with the condom? Brian. Um, oh, Bobby is William Shatner. No, uh, Brian, that kid, he had an arc in season three of Dawson's Creek. Okay. But that's the extent of it. Those are the only actors I knew anything from this movie. He looked like uh, Joshua Jackson, I thought. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the actors they cast on Dawson's Creek were just like poorer versions of Joshua Jackson. <laughs> uh, so that guy's dead. What else have we start killing everybody else? I mean, Lindy Booth, she's got to die because she's having an affair and she gets the position. So got to hang her, right? I thought Shatner was good in the scene where he discovers her body. Thought he was good there? Yeah. Uh, Shatner's my MVP. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's actually fine. I, there was one part I thought they should have done. He where he the she tapes by she I mean Mila Kunis. She tapes like a thing to Lindy Booth, and she's like, "He didn't love me enough." I wanted for Shatner to like find a photo of uh of somebody else of like Lindy Booth with somebody else and put that on her to be like, "This is the reason I did it." This person like frame somebody else. I thought that would have been a good move. But he didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that could himself. have been interesting. But instead, they just kill him off like five minutes later. Yeah, he like falls out a window. Yeah, and that's that sucked. That's the worst moment in the entire movie. I laughed out loud. It was terrible. <laughs> Me too. Why um, did he fall? I don't understand. I don't know. He just like backed away. He was scared. She blew him a kiss. She was <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. And then he she fell. Blew him I was a like, kiss what? Out the window. Yeah. Um, it was terrible. But. Like that killing off Shatner at that moment with like a half hour left in the movie really killed that last half hour for me. Well, then we get a whole twist. My interest waned after that. After he's dead, we introduce the whole thing where she is not who she says she is because her parents come and they're like, well, she's using a wrong name. And then we get like a reveal. She killed the girl and took her name. That's like a whole thing we add on. That's right. None of that works for me. What is it? Rachel? Rachel Newman. Yeah, there was a Rachel Newman that she's just had living in her closet as a dead body. It didn't so add like anything to me. She's like completely crazy. She's she's living in a dorm room with a corpse. Yeah, I, that was a cute moment. The corpse like falls out and she's like, hey, get but back in there. But it's a totally rotted corpse. Yep. Like, it would stink. Like, the rest of mm-hmm. the building would be complaining. I would agree with you. All right. Yeah, that was a problem. But uh, so the the doctor, um, Doctor Eric Daniels is his name. <laughs> he is like she's crazy. We have to the two hosts of the untitled untitled Charles <laughs> Grodin podcast. Eric Daniels. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> yeah. I wrote this though. There's a the part where the their answering machine. He calls his mom, and I thought about if uh. The, the directors of everything everywhere all at once if this was their answering machine it says roses are red violets are blue the daniels will soon be calling back you um when that happened in the movie i turned to my girlfriend and i legitimately and i meant it when i said it i'm gonna make that my answering machine message it, but you didn't do it like my voice moment well it's only a day later okay i'd still do it <laughs> roses are red violets are blue what, what was the next line the daniels will soon be calling back you but i would say daniel will soon be calling back you 
And then as soon as you get in touch with the person that called you, they're going to be like, what the hell was that? And you're going to have to explain the whole thing to them. No, no. The beautiful thing about it is I never actually call people back. Oh, me either, <laughs> me either, actually. If I miss you, I miss you. And usually I never answer my phone. So yep. I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so that happens. And there's a big thing where, I don't know, big, a big explosion. And then at the end, the guy Terrible wrote a Terrible explosion, really bad. Horrible explosion. The guy writes a book. And who's at the book signing? Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. So she's they think she's dead which she clearly isn't we see her like scouting out that location earlier in the movie like mm -hmm. this is where i'm gonna fake my own death <laughs> and uh in a kind of a stylish scene to be honest i liked the soundtrack like the soundtrack in the original american Weird Psycho score. is, is brilliant weird. and like essential to the movie and stuff but like the soundtrack to this one is just a bunch of bullshit indie rock songs, but like some pretty good bullshit indie rock songs. I'll give them that. Um, anyway, but so she fakes her own death and then she shows up at the thing and it turns out that she has now murdered his teacher's assistant and taken her identity and is working for the FBI. And I'm like, that's right. Does that mean she's still so that was her goal right getting mm -hmm. to the fbi now so, she gets to kill the bad you, guys instead of the good do guys you, do you think the teacher's assistant was the last person she'll ever kill that isn't a serial killer yeah i think she went through all the bad and now she's on the other side so she succeeded like she's never gonna get caught again queen <laughs> yes queen <laughs> she did yeah. it what a barbie yeah. That's fun. And then she's like, and then voiceover at the end, she's like, I just wanted him to know. Because what good is it if nobody knows? And it's like, yeah, serial killers do do that. They do always like confess to their murders because they want people to know they did it. Yeah. They write letters to the cops and shit. Yeah. The newspapers. That was fun. Um, yeah. So this movie's horrible. It's really bad, but I loved it. I'm going to go two stars. I'm going to give it a one. No, oh, come on. No, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> but we got a great lead performance at the center of it. No, we don't. And some great dialogue. No. <laughs> Those are not the things I enjoy. Oh, wait, that was the first film. movie I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my MVP is just the chat. Oh, uh, mine's Mila. Okay. LVP, I'm going with her babysitter. Why are you taking an 11 year old to meet with the man who's going to try to kill you? That's a really fair point, I'll tell you. And I didn't hate the actors. I feel like you're going to go the psychiatrist guy, but I kind of liked him. No, I I the, I made fun of him for being very Canadian, but I actually Why is that like even funny? Him. <laughs> like I looked for like after Shatner died, I would like those were the only scenes I was looking forward to. Yeah. Well, that's really the rest of the movie. It's like a cat and mouse thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's I mean, short. It's fun. It's like an hour and 25 minutes. Am I allowed to do a thing like Lionsgate for making it an American Psycho no. sequel? Sure. I don't care that much. I always uh, like that. I, I always think we should actually pick who's the MVP and LVP of this entire project. But you're the one that really likes to focus on the actors, actresses. So that's why yeah, I Yeah, maybe I should open it up more, gang. Let me know if you agree. Um leave it in the comments <laughs> but, uh, yeah i uh I, I i mean genuinely i think that's the answer but like if you really want me to go with like someone i'll i'll i don't know who'd you go with i went with the babysitter from the beginning oh you know what i'm gonna go with gertie i'm sorry to say oh. like i i thought like she didn't deserve to die oh, or she anything, was terrible actually but the performance was out of step with the rest of the film yeah, you're actually right. She stood out even amongst the, Brian and all these other people. She yeah. was really bad. It's a good call. Yeah. So there MVP the cat for living. Yeah, great job, cat. Love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I want to bring up uh, one of the cops. The guy, psychiatrist meets some cops and he's like, cops, you got to come with me. Uh, one of them is this guy, Boyd Banks, who was in. Yeah, those, I recognize this guy. Yeah. Oh, is that what he's from? Yeah, but he was in Dawn of the Dead, the Snyder movie with Lindy Booth. Remember, she's the girl who has the dog. I, yeah, I did. He loves her dog. That. So I thought that was cool. They're, they're, I mean, they're not in any scenes together, but they're in the same movie. So shout out to them. I wonder if they talked about American Psycho <laughs> 2 on the set of Donald I doubt Dead. it, actually. <laughs> I forgot they were in it. Uh, so should we read from the Patreon? I, I'm not sure. sure we have anything. I uploaded this really late last night. I'm getting a call. Potential spam. Of, <laughs> I can answer that one. Uh, ah, there's probably nothing. Yeah. But I want to know. I want to know. I need to know. Tell me, baby. Because <laughs> I need to know. What is going there, on? I filled some time. Oh, by it doesn't singing, come. I filled some time for you by singing Mark Anthony. Well, was I was just going to edit helpful? all that out, but I guess I'll keep it oh. up since you, since you entertained everybody. The All right, nothing from Patreon. What are we doing next week, Daniel? I don't know. You tell me, buddy. Didn't you win fantasy football? No, Are you I gonna lost. tell us? Oh, you lost. Oh, is that what oh, this was? God Daniel, damn it! I lost, <laughs> I lost uh, in the finals. All right, so I I went into X DMs and I I I sent <laughs> David a little DM. I said, "What what would you like for us to cover next week?" And you know what he said? Tell me. He said, "Dragon Ball Z." No, no, he said. He said, "I would pick Dragon Ball Z, but oh, I don't. I don't want to torture you guys. I don't want you thank guys to you, keep David. The podcast, thank so. you so much. I looked it up. Those are like twenty. If he did that, would we have done that? I guess we'd have to. I looked it up. It was like twenty-two movies or something. But he picked. I'm not sure how exactly you want to do this. It's a three-movie franchise. We, I think that would usually go one in the first week and then two in the second week. Mm. But it's Harold and Kumar." I love it. Oh my god, great. What's the first one? White Castle or Guantanamo Bay? That came up just recently in the discussions for what to do around Christmas, by the way. Yeah, and we did so, talk about it. Yeah, so this is delightful. White Castle's um, first. Yeah, White Castle's first. So do you want to do that like one week? <laughs> just Harold and Kumar go to White Castle? Hmm. Do you want to do, do, do an episode Friday? Would that be impossible? That that Friday and then the other one on Tuesday? The that other two? Wouldn't be impossible. I think that would be fun. Interesting. All right, so get ready for some more franchise this week. All right. <laughs> coming, coming your way. So, uh, yeah, we're going to later this week, you'll get one bonus episode on Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And then we'll be back next Tuesday to finish up the trilogy with Harold and Kumar escape from Guantanamo Bay and Harold and of uh, or a very Harold and Kumar Christmas in 3D. I, I believe didn't know that the full title. Yes. <laughs> it's not what IMDb said. But what did that say? It just says, oh, it does say a very in three 3D original yeah. title. There wow. you go. A 3D Christmas. That's what it was released as. Um right. Anyway, I'm excited. I, have you seen these? I've never seen a Harold and Kumar movie. Oh my god, then I'm even more excited because I have seen them all, Logan, including the first one in theaters, owned the first one on DVD, watched it a bunch of times. No big deal. Um, I've seen the, the sequels just once a piece, but um, these What's the are, difference? Are they not as funny? They're yeah, the first one's like far are you were older. The one. No, no, no. I, I think the first one just is the best by far um by far. but okay. but none of them are bad and i think this is going to be a very fun franchise for us all right i'm excited and great job by david if 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 anybody else does that if you want to get like two in one week just give us a franchise with three we might do that yeah, we seriously. Might just do two in one week so uh, and i want to say congratulations david on the fantasy football season um yeah. I, I had a really good season this year in that league uh, not in my other league, but in this league. And uh, you, David pretty much fucking dominated me the entire two weeks of the, the finals. So, like, I mean, he deserves the, the big victory. The big V. The big V. Shout out to David. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
What Although else? I will say, Anything Travis else? Kelsey let me down. He let everybody down. He let everybody, everybody except for Taylor. I know. He let down this season. All that love that we needed is going Taylor's way. And now I saw he's already talking about like an acting career. He's already got one foot out of the NFL. I remember one time um, when I was a kid, I was at a Yankees game, and Alex Rodriguez <laughs> was on the team, and he was in a slump. And I remember the talk of the town, like everywhere you went in Yankee Stadium, everyone was talking about it's because he's dating Mariah Carey. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's devoting all his energy. Any to new Mariah change though, in somebody's life, that's going to be the reason for <laughs> for the thing not going well. I know. Especially if there's like a whole fan base around it, observing it, like speculating about why. It was just so funny. Like an entire city is like blaming a singer on a fucking third baseman's lack of. I think that we're doing that. No, I think we are. We are a little bit for sure. It's it that has not gone away ever. Yeah. Um. All right. So Harold and Kumar coming your way leave some itunes reviews here guys. on the do franchise that? yeah itunes nice. reviews would be helpful and make sure you subscribe to the patreon five dollars a month um subscribe but- to our youtube channel i don't i, I yeah. doubt i'll post anything with this video i was recording my little avatar guy but upcoming i'm gonna post more on the youtube channel so the yes. franchise on youtube wow check so it much out. to check out <laughs> It's so excited! Exciting if you listen time. to our us go through our letterbox stats, I turned that into a little video. Ooh. You can watch that. Okay, that's fun. I will. I didn't um, mean you, I meant listeners, check it out. But I will too. No, I know you won't. <laughs> <laughs> There's won't. zero chance you're going to do that. <laughs> you're more likely to show me your cat. That it might happen. What was it? Okay, there? I already forgot. Zena, like oh, the yeah, Zena. princess.